We are live. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay. We are live. Welcome to our episode today. We're going to be talking about the best legal entities uh, for buying uh, real estate, the best uh, business entities for buying real estate. Plus, we're joined by a special guest today. Uh, that's Baby Eve, who's uh, chewing on a Wonder Woman uh, teether today. Yeah. You want to say hi? She should be quiet. Um, I'm Natalie. Okay, sit a little closer. Mother of Eve and uh, wife of Clayton. And glad to be on the stream with you guys Talk louder. today. Stop right. telling me what to do, Clayton. We're off on a good start. All right. So today we're going to talk about the best legal entities uh, to buy real estate in. It's such an important, one of the most important things you can do as a real estate investor, not only from a legal perspective, but also from a tax perspective. Right. Uh, you know, buying properties as a sole proprietor, buying properties individually on your own, uh, with your own, in your own name. You know, Natalie Morris is the wrong way to go about buying rental properties. Uh, typically, though, you'll have to do that when getting an FHA loan or a typical, you know, uh, typical financing. But ultimately, you want to have these properties inside of an LLC or some other legal entity. So we're going to talk about that today, right? Right. So let's just talk about sort of the basics of owning real estate inside a corporation. Um, so we're talking about incorporating yourself either into an S-Corp or an LLC. Um, why you should, Which one of those you should choose is a subject for a different uh, show. But we're just going to assume that you now are looking to buy your rental real estate inside of a corporation that you own, whether it be an S Corp or an LLC or a partnership or a sole proprietorship, whatever. You, you Or you don't want to do a sole proprietorship, which means you just buy it in your own name, John Doe, under your social security number. Now, why would you do that? There are a couple of reasons. One is that whatever you own in the LLC, you are protected uh, up to what is owned in that LLC. So if something were to happen that's undesirable, like, I don't know, you give an example because you always kick me under the table if I give examples oh, you don't like. What, from like a, a renter? Like something that, that, the, yeah, something that okay, you don't so like that, that happens undesirable that you can get sued for. That I don't like. Um, how about if the tenant doesn't like it? Like if the tenant, for instance... Someone had, wants to sue you for something. Right, so the tenant has asked you to fix a handrail because they're elderly and they're worried that they might slip. Right. As a landlord, it's your responsibility to fix the handrail. And if they slip and they fall and they decide they want to sue you, then that's a problem. So right. the idea is that they would want to sue you. You'd want to be protected under an LLC. Right. So they, they can sue you. If I own the property, Natalie Morris, the lady, right, they can sue me for everything I own all the way up to Baby Eve's college fund. But if I own the property, Natalie Morris LLC, they can only sue me for what is owned in Natalie Morris LLC. So the point here is that you protect yourself because you are only liable for what is owned inside that LLC. Now that's one of the reasons we only put a few properties at a time in each LLC because as we build our portfolio and we own around 30 rental properties and someone maybe in one of those properties something goes wrong, and then we could lose all 30 of our rental properties, right? So we only put up to $150,000 in value in each LLC so that if something goes wrong in one and worst, worst, worst case scenario, we could only be liable or lose up to what's owned in that, which is $150,000, which again sounds scary. Most of the time, hopefully this doesn't happen because you're the kind of person who watches podcasts and live streams. You do your due diligence. If you're the kind of person who's watching something like this, you're clearly not going to do wrong by your tenants. That's right. Um, but we're assuming that you're, but again, you always want to protect yourself. Um, and then the second reason to put yourself in an LLC and put your properties in an LLC has to do with taxation because the government taxes corporations much friendlier than they do people, right? Do you, do you want to explain that? Well, okay, so repeat that again. That, that um, The government taxes corporations much friendlier than they do people. Right. So, right. I mean, the tax the tax structure is, you know, much friendlier. I mean, I don't know how else to say that. I mean, you've said it. it right. I, what, well, what's because, the best way to describe okay, that? Okay, as a person, if you, Natalie Morris, the person, if I make $100, but it costs me $50 in business expenses to make that $100, the government still taxes me on $100. 
Okay. Now you can deduct expenses and that comes off the bottom line at the end. But if I make $100 Natalie Morris, the corporation, but it costs me $50 to, in expenses to make that $100, yeah. I am only taxed on $50. It's as if I ever only made $50. Now, what do you want to pay taxes on? As your tax rate, do you want to pay taxes on $100? Or do you want to pay taxes on $50? What would you like, Clayton? I would much rather pay taxes on the $50 as a corporation. As the individual, you're being then taxed as the individual at the full you know, the full amount. Right. 100%. And that's why smart investors know that you want to use a legal entity in order to buy real estate. Because the tax structure is so advantageous. Uh, how does Tom Wheelwright describe it? He's one of the smartest accountants in the world for real estate investors. Um, he was the rich dad, poor dad. He's Robert Kiyosaki's personal tax advisor. How does he describe sole proprietorships? Oh, um, he, he pretends it's an ac acronym of sorts for someday you'll lose everything. Right. So if you're owning rental properties in your own name, that is a huge mistake. You want to immediately start to, to pivot in that regard. So um, first of all, I just want to make sure we're, you guys can hear us clearly out there. If you're watching live right now, we've got a lot of people watching right now. Just let us know in the chat area. Any questions you have, we'll open it up to some Q&A here in a few minutes. But we've got a lot of questions already that you've been already sending in to us. So we're going to answer those questions. But let's just double check that you guys can hear us OK in the chat. Check. Check one. Check. Check. All right, Check Dwayne. Two. Dwayne says, uh, "All right, how do you handle banking accounts for many LLCs? How do you handle banking accounts for many LLCs?" Ooh, this is tough. <laughs> um, this is something that I have been working to put together this year, and I, I won't pretend that it's easy uh, because each LLC does need its own bank account, and the way that we are currently working to structure it is that each bank account. Um, will be within one bank. Now, we found a really friendly local bank that doesn't charge us um, because we were using a big bank before and we were being charged not only a monthly fee, but we were ch being charged uh, a, a, for a lot of sort of nickels and dimes. We had to keep a minimum balance as well. And, you know, in the main holding company, we might be able to hit that minimum balance. But then since we have one bank account per LLC, we, we weren't able to keep that minimum balance. Um, and so we found a local bank that doesn't require a minimum balance and doesn't charge a monthly fee. So shop around for a local bank that will do that. It wasn't that hard to find. Right. We were with Bank of America, right? And we switched to a um, local uh, bank in New Jersey right. called Lakeland Bank. And they've just been phenomenal. I think they're in Pennsylvania, too. Um, but I, I, I actually don't know how national they are. But they're a, a much smaller. Now, they don't have the same robust website site as Bank of America and uh, for instance if I want to wire That's one of the trade-offs. Right, if I want to wire money for a closing of, of a new property I have to actually go to the bank. Um, bank of America allows me to do on, that online. That's kind of anachronistic, right? So you make some trade-offs. Um, but one of the things that I've been working with our CPA is then how does the LLCs pay the holding company because the way we have it structured is there's a holding company as it, either an LLC or it's taxed as an S corp it depends what your CPA says is best for you and then sort of you think of it as an umbrella and then underneath you sort of hang your LLCs like you know one two three four and then in each one has up to one hundred fifty thousand dollars of value of properties so inside each one is three or four properties maybe one property if it's worth one hundred fifty thousand dollars or more um, and so those umbrellas are their own bank accounts and I inside of my online banking I'm able to transfer within those bank accounts up to the umbrella company because the holding company is is will, will file taxes inside the holding company, um, and now how much do I pay the holding company because that's where like my legal fees, my CPA fees, um, you know, like cell phone bills kind of thing. Um, that's something I'm still still working to learn. How do the LLCs pay? the holding company, um, so stay tuned for that. But simple answer is that yes, each LLC does need its own bank account. Okay, great. We've got a lot of people saying good. The audio is great. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, Shutter Assault. Yeah, the minimums on those bank accounts are really annoying, and yeah. Bank of America is expensive. And we had to, you know, for their business checking, you had to hit a certain limit 
um, I think it's like $15,000 in each account, that, uh, uh, daily average. And if you didn't, then you had to spend $250 per month in an ATM transaction. And you have to be really careful with those ATM transactions because you can't just go to the bank and take out $250 because this is a business expense that has to be documented. So if I wanted to use an ATM card, say at Costco, in order to hit that $250 per month account um, transaction limit, then I'd have to write down what did I buy at Costco that was for the business. I can't go and buy like eggs for our family because I can't spend personal money out of the business account. Um, And so that was something I had to learn. And and so I would go and like pull $250 out of the ATM and then I'd have to write down what we spent it for because I don't want to be audited. And they'd say, wait, you took cash out of the business account? That's illegal because right. you you weren't taxed on that money right right so it's tricky these are things you have to keep in mind i know sometimes investors because we say hey open an llc and they think okay great i'll just use this llc bank account as my personal bank account and then pay for like my daughter's ballet lessons out of that you can't do that you can only use a business account for business expenses if you take that money to use it personally you have to report that as a draw as income for you i know you'll yell at me if i take money out of the account at the grocery store why did you use that account right and so you know i'll have to either pay it back because sometimes you know clayton he doesn't carry a wallet he carries like a, a clip like a safety pin <laughs> of his, right. of his like money wa- and like my wallet used to look like costanza's wallet right. on seinfeld and i got sick and tired of it and i and just so, wanted like one i just want i don't want to even carry a wallet at all I just right want to use Apple clayton's Pay. a high level person right and so every now and again i'd be like you use the wrong card mm-hmm. so if you do that i'm gonna have to document that we paid it back or we'll have to then if he takes money out from that account then we're gonna have to keep that money aside until we need it for the business as like petty cash or something um and uh if you follow my blog or my brand you know that i'm very anal about keeping meticulous notes um but you know you're gonna have to keep that money and use it only for your business otherwise you're gonna have to report it on your personal taxes all right we got a bunch of questions to get to here so let's dive into it um do you want to take her for a second you want to put her in the little uh, chair sure she's getting a little fussy she's getting a little fussy and fighting me it's like wrestling a a wild animal. Um, So yeah, put her down. We'll answer this question here. Do you need a lawyer, uh, just one in our state or one in each state where we own properties uh, for your rental setting things up? I mean, so in our structuring, we set up LLCs that that own each individual property up to $150,000 in value. So now the properties that we do, like at Morris Invest, are going to be right around that forty dollars to $50,000 range. So for us, that's about three properties in one LLC. And then we go up from there. So three properties in one LLC, and then those LLCs are reporting up to a holding company. Now that holding company, we had a lawyer set up. Because right. simple LLCs, you can go on your own state's uh, Department of State website, super simple to set up, really easy to do. It takes like, it's like $100. You go to the Department of State for your state. Let's say it's Indiana, for instance. You would go to Indiana's Department of State website, click on start new business. $100 later, you've got an LLC set up. Those are super simple to set up. The setting up of a holding company LLC is something that you want then a lawyer to look at and do and seek his advice or her advice on because those individual LLCs that own your rental properties are then going to report up to that holding company. And let me just let you learn from our mistakes here. We had sort of, when we first started, we owned one or two. We were able to get an LLC and then put those in the LLC. But then as we grew bigger and bigger and we had all of our properties in one, you know, like mom and pop LLC, right? And then we actually did some wealth planning. Then our lawyers and our CPAs said, well, we don't want that to be owned in this type of corporation. And we want this corporation now to answer to this corporation. So I'm going to tell you right now, in order to change everything, we had like, like I said, at the time we started this, we had 20 plus rental properties. We had to then go and put them into separate ownerships, restructure the LLCs, put the LLCs in different states. It costs us, um, 
Clayton doesn't know this. Uh, it costs fifteen thousand dollars in what? legal fees in order to restructure everything that I know. <laughs> in in order to restructure everything the proper what? way. Now, okay. This way is, to drop this bombshell. Yeah, I know. So. Do you want to do this yourself? Well, when you're small, you can do these things yourself. But as you grow and you have to go back and fix it the right way, you maybe don't want to do that. And my dad, he's a small business owner, and he always used to say, act like you're as big as you want to be. Like, run your business like you already are Apple, right? So maybe you think, okay, I'm small potatoes. I can just open one LLC myself. Maybe, but I would, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of real real estate um, experts, people, tax accountants and lawyers who understand real estate investing. And if you feel like you have one that understands real estate investing, ask their advice early but don't just ask your regular cpa i I can most of the time guarantee that the dude at h&r block or the you know live chat person on TurboTax will not (laughs) understand this Uh, you want a specialist who you trust Um, and in fact we sought out people who we had heard on podcasts because we thought that person gets it that's the right person Um, if your specialist and i mean is there seek an av- out these podcasts and seek out these experts. Is there an average, Shutter Assault is asking, is there an average amount that we should expect to pay in CPA lawyers per year? It seems like you need one to two houses just to pay legal fees. Not really. That's a hard question. I mean, overall, I mean, it, once you have these things set up, yeah. you're not going back to the till repeatedly to keep on paying right. them over and over. Once they set these entities up for you, it's a pretty simple process. And you want to think about that not as something that your rental cash flow pays for. This is an investment in your overall estate planning. It's not just for, you're not setting it up for one rent because I guess, you know, when we started with, uh, we've talked many times about how we're clients of ProVision, and we love them, but when we started with them, we thought, okay, we just want advice on, like, how to put our LLCs and how to pay taxes on each one, and should we put them, and they were like, whoa, back the truck up. We want you to think about this as overall estate planning, not just per property. So I hope that makes sense, because this is an investment in your, like, what they made us do is not just restructure our LLCs and our corporations, but think of it as family estate planning. So we had to do living wills. We had to do, um, what do you call it, your uh, power of attorney and your medical power of attorney. We had to decide, like, if something happens to us, who makes our medical decisions, who gets our kids, who gets, how do we split split up our houses. Um, We had to do all of that because the LLC all report to the holding company. The holding company, we're thinking of it as an umbrella, but there is something above the holding company, which is our, I'm testing you. What's above the holding company? Our trust. Our poor over trust. How do you listen to me? <laughs> I put you on the spot and I wasn't sure you get that right. Um, mm-hmm. Clayton kicks me under the table a lot in that one. Thankfully he didn't. Uh, so the poor over trust is what is what owns the holding company. So inside of our trust is like, we own the holding company. We own our personal residence. We own vehicles. We own um, some artwork. We own assets, right? Um, But if there's something, say, that we purchased that we didn't put in these entities, like we know the properties are owned by the entities. We know we own our personal real estate. We know uh, who owns the vehicles. We know who owns, uh, we just bought this beautiful piece of art by our um, by our friend who's an artist, uh, Douglas Molini. You could look, look it up. And uh, so that's something of value that we will own, and it will um, hold its value because um, he's a, a, an amazing artist. So, But we didn't put that in any, like, in. it's not owned in an LLC. It's not owned in any kind of, like, bank account. So if something were to happen to us, that would then get distributed because it, we have a pour over trust. Does that make sense? Did I do a good yeah, job? Yeah, that's a good Okay. Um, <coughs> so 
you want to get to? We have a lot of questions here. Do we want to? Okay. Or were you finishing? Have that? I have I sufficiently? Do you think answered that? So so the point is, yes, I, I would get a lawyer early and think about this not as something that's paid for. I mean, eventually you do pay. You know, you, you it does pay off because you're lowering your taxation. You're you're paying your taxes more efficiently, and you're able to own real estate in a better in a more friendly asset. But I wouldn't think of this as something that like pays for itself right this is an investment in right. in your in your in your estate planning plus you know legal fees are a write off for your business true that don't forget that legal fees are a write off so it is a business expense one that you you know it's a necessary right. business expense and right? that and that you know big legal fee that we paid last year uh, we got the bill around december and i was like i want to pay this now because i want it on my 2016 taxes right Okay, so here are some other questions. Uh, how hard is it to uh, how hard is it to create corporate formalities for each LLC? I think we just answered that. Yeah, so we? I okay. think we just answered that. Very, very simple. You're, you know, you can just go to your state, your state's Department of State website, uh, where we have our properties. We use that state, and we set it up on their website very, very quickly, very simply. You could pay somebody else a couple hundred dollars more, like LegalZoom. But you can do it for a lot less if you just do it on your own because that's exactly what they're going to do. So might as well just save yourself a few hundred bucks and do it yourself. And then hire a lawyer if you're going to start doing the holding company structuring right. separately. Again, I, if you're just getting started, you want to work backwards, right? Like you, you've got the freedom cheat sheet. You understand what you want to own. You understand what the goals are. So create the structure in order to plug in your assets later um, or do it our way and pay fifteen thousand dollars in legal fees right that's fine too mm. so, <laughs> but I think you should get you should at least you know think about doing it right as as sort of a way to put it out there in the universe that I intend to be big potatoes so the freedom cheat sheet you was talking about by the way it's a really powerful it's totally free go to our website it's morrisinvest.com slash freedom you can download it it's like three pages it'll kind of walk you through figuring out your financial freedom number and then you can sort of reverse engineer how many rental properties it'll take for you to get there the financial freedom okay next question um, when do you transition from just a landlord to an official LLC um, I don't know if you well first of all to me, being a landlord, you want to have an LLC immediately. So I don't think there is a transition. I think maybe if you did it incorrectly at the beginning. I think they're asking for a threshold, like a certain amount of money or, you know, but I think we. One property. Right. Should You know, if you have one property, one rental property, that should be in an LLC. Like you should, right out of the gate. Right. We right talked about that in the beginning of the show, the advantages. Right. So hopefully we answered your question. But if there's another threshold that you're asking for, then ask us again. You know how to reach out. Here's a question. Can you go more in depth with some of the details of getting conventional mortgages? If you're getting a loan through an LLC, don't you only qualify for a commercial loan then? Or do you get mortgages in your name and then roll those into an LLC somehow? Both of those things are true. You right. can qualify for a commercial loan if you have an LLC. Um, if you or, have it in your own name or your LLC, you won't be able to get a conventional loan, an FHA right. loan. You'll have to do it in your own personal name, and you're allowed to do it up to 10 properties under the current Dodd-Frank laws, the current regulatory laws, which hopefully will change soon. But you can only get 10 properties on using your own personal name. Now, after you close on the property, you have the loan, you can then quit claim deed or a warranty deed it over to your LLC. It's like $150 transferring it into the name of your LLC. Now, people will ask, because this is another question here, will that, will that trigger a due on sale clause? Meaning that a conventional loan, typically if you sell it, that's going to trigger what's known as a due on sale clause. Now, consult with your own lawyers on this, but it's not a sale when you're transferring it to your LLC. It won't trigger a sale because there's nothing is actually selling that we're just transferring the deed to the LLC. And therefore, it's not gonna trigger a due on sale, meaning that the bank's not gonna come knocking on your door saying, hey, we lent you $50,000, $100,000, we want it now because you just sold it to Joe's LLC. It's not gonna happen. It's I, I have never heard of that ever happening. Wait, say again. Say okay, so a due on sale clause- Is in your mortgage. Is in your mortgage, meaning that this mortgage is due uh -huh. on a sale. Right. If I sell it it's to Sally, due in full. it's due in full. Right. Okay. However, 
if I buy it in my name, Clayton Morris, and I'm going to transfer it to an LLC, uh-huh. my Clayton Morris LLC or whatever, you do what's called a quit claim deed or a warranty deed with your lawyer, consult with your lawyer. Right. It's a very simple process, a couple hundred dollars, and it will not trigger that due on sale clause because a sale hasn't occurred. You're just transferring the deed name. So there's no sale. Hmm. You're not selling it to the LLC because that's an actual event. That's a capital gains taxable event. So you're not paying taxes on that. You're not transferring it. Now it's in the name of your LLC and it will not trigger the due on sale clause. I just recently consulted a mortgage expert on this very question and they said, no, that is not a sale. It will not trigger a due on sale clause. And by the way, Banks don't want to be in the ownership of rental property. Right. There are a lot of things actually in the mortgage that could trigger a due on sale, though. Like, um, for instance, we we put an addition on our old property, and uh, I didn't realize that we had to tell the mortgage company about that because we added to the value of it, and they want to know because they are, you know, they own 60% or whatever of the property. So, um, th- there are there are some mortgages, and you want to again make sure you you know you read your mortgage uh, carefully because some mortgages mm-hmm. have clauses about transfer of ownership. Right. Um, so just be you know be really careful about that. But uh, can you refinance a property owned by an LLC? So now usually you, not the conventional way. But look, there are so many. There's so much private money available. There are private institutional lenders that will definitely and only allow you to do it if you have it in an LLC. A couple of our investors right now who just purchased properties, um, a couple of the properties they own with us, they have just now done a refinance. They've pulled the equity out of those properties. They own them in an LLC. They went to a they went to a a, a, a lender and they were able to pull equity out of the, those properties in order to then buy their next round of properties. So, yes, the con- you, I just want you to get out of the mindset of thinking about conventional loans. Like, there are so many other ways to buy real estate and there's so many other ways to refinance using all sorts of private institutional lenders, you know, Uncle Jimmy, who you could structure a private note with. Um, you could get home equity lines of credit on those properties, so you're not having to actually do cash out refinances. And we could spend a whole episode. In fact, maybe that'll be a next a future video where we talk about the different ways to you know expand your portfolio. Yeah. Um, and take. Well, we've talked a lot about leveraging, and so if you watch the previous video about that, then you might know how hard it is to leverage your wealth using Wall Street banks. We have a video called Exponentially Grow Your Real Estate Portfolio here on the channel. Um, And I think it actually, we have to publish it yet, but it'll be there live. We'll actually have a card right here so you can click on it and watch that where we spend an hour talking about how to expand your portfolio doing these different strategies, wealth building strategies. Mm -hmm. Next question. This one? Sure. Uh, If you purchase a property with an FHA loan, it's intended to be owner occupied. Will the bank refuse to lend if they see you're buying it under an LLC? I think so. I yeah. don't. Uh, you can't. You cannot. You can't do use an FHA loan for. Um, I remember this in real estate school. For you can't. It has to. An FHA loan is for your primary residence, and so is a VA loan. They are not meant for you to get cheap bank products in order to invest. They're they're meant to help you get into a primary residence. Yeah, you can. It, Right. Exactly. You cannot. Yeah, you cannot buy it with an LLC. It they'll they will they won't even talk to you. <laughs> You've got to have it in your own personal name because look, you're borrowing against your own personal credit, your ability to pay it back as a person mm-hmm. uh, or jointly, maybe husband and wife. Your your salary. They're going to look at two years of your tax returns. Right. They're going to look at your 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 paycheck. They're going to see that you have the ability to to pay this loan back over thirty years. Well, a VA loan and F- F- FHA loan exist because they want to help people who have hardship, or you know, kind of uh, VA's vets not necessarily hardship, but a veteran has given their career and their effort and their livelihood to serving our country. (coughs) So, you know, we pay them back by saying, we're going to help you get into a loan when you're no longer in the armed services. So because we know that the transition into civilian life is hard, and so we help you out, right? That's why Congress allows these types of loans. That's why they're legal. But it's not created for you to then invest and you know it'd be awesome if it if if it were but that's not what it's for 
Here's another question. Can, uh, or do you need, we, we still haven't gotten an answer to this, I don't believe. Do you need liability insurance on each rental property? Getting this insurance on the LLC entity itself or both? That's a great question. So we always have insurance yeah. on each rental property. Usually a few hundred dollars a year, four, five, six hundred dollars a Up year. Up to the value of the property. Right. So we'll get, for instance, on the properties we buy that are the bulk of our portfolio, and we've got whatever it's 30, 40 properties in our portfolio, we've got uh, liability insurance on those. Uh, up to um, about fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars in value, even though we paid about forty for those properties. So, God forbid the house burns down, we get a check for fifty or fifty-five thousand, rebuild a new house, or just clear the lot, sell it back to the city, and move on and buy another house. You know, I don't, we don't sweat that stuff. But so that insurance on each of those properties. Now, as far as the LLC, this is something we've been talking about, which is, do we get an umbrella policy right. that co- Oh yeah. That covers the individual LLC. So Eve seems to like the idea of getting an individual uh, or some sort of umbrella insurance over the individual LLCs. We need to really dive deep into that. We're going to do a video. We will ask our lawyers. Yeah, we're going to ask. We'll let you know. (laughs) We're going to do a special video just on that question uh, and insurance for your LLCs and for your rental properties. Um, Here's a great question. Uh, currently, I have five rentals that I've owned for a few years now. I also had an LLC, but didn't originally buy the properties with the LLC. I know now that my best option is to put those properties in the LLC, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. Do I have to refinance into the LLC and out of my personal finances? Are there tax benefits to doing this? Okay, we talked about the tax benefits already, so we won't go back. But uh, the the process is usually pretty simple. You can go to an escrow person, a title and escrow person, or a lawyer, and say, "I'd like to put these properties into an LLC." And the lawyers know right how to do that. They'll say, "Okay, I'll prepare a deed for you, either a warranty deed or a quick claim deed," and they will prepare that for you. They'll send it to you. You go get it notarized. Voila, the property is owned by your LLC. Uh, but his question here gives me pause. Do I have to refinance? So I'm wondering if those five rentals are he has them in his own name but are they owned partially by the bank like are they financed because that i mean if they're financed again this goes back to the due on sale clause issue which i talked about earlier he could then do a warranty deed into an llc he doesn't have to refinance the properties right you don't have to go through that process Um, and by the way they won't let you refinance it if you're doing it into an llc so you just have to go do a warranty deed, transfer the deed to your LLC. You're still paying the bank back, mm-hmm. and uh, you don't need to refinance it. But then you're now getting the tax benefits of owning that property that way. Right. But it's always better if you're going to buy the properties, buy them in an LLC first. First, first, first. You get the depreciation. You get all of the benefits of owning that rental property um, and being taxed as a business, not as an individual. Um, for your properties. That's the biggest yeah. That's the biggest reason. Okay, let's just jump back over now to our stream here and see what questions we've got from people in the stream. So let's go back through some of these questions. Oh, there we go. Um, Lindsay wants to know, what should we label our LLC when I sign up for my EIN number if we want to do more than real estate for our LLC? What should we label our LLC? Well, oh, that's, a, that's a good question. Okay, if you want to do more than real estate for your LLC. Now, this is something that we also learned the hard way because we had one tax person say, oh, you know, just have one LLC that you own in your house and then any kind of like other stuff that you do outside of your day jobs put in that LLC. So what we had was not only our, like, we both have our own freelance speaking careers, um, and we're available if you'd like to book us. Right. Uh, we both, and, and Clayton created a speed reading app for iPad, and so we had that inside of one LLC. And then that LLC also owned 15 real estate investments before we started restructuring. And then that LLC also had, what else was in that LLC? Um, God knows. Yeah, um, like it's podcasts 
you know, stuff that oh, we right, did. Right, like, right. So it, then it just made no sense. And I was like, is the government going to be okay with this? So that was dumb. Uh, we did that the wrong way because we had a tax person who just didn't understand the nature of our business. Um, he was great. I, I love this guy, but I don't think he understood exactly. He just was like, I don't want to prepare a bunch of tax returns for these different business entities. So just put it all in one LLC. So um, the way we have done it, uh, this is something I, I, I left out of. I should show the structure diagram, but um, this is, the, so, okay. Pour over trust. Inside of that, the umbrella holding company, right? Inside of the umbrella holding company, all the individual LLCs that hold the properties. But we also have in underneath the umbrella holding company something called um, an LLC consultants. So whatever we do inside of the LLC that's like, um, this is hard to explain. <laughs> well, Can you help me out here? Because it oh, makes sense no. in my head but and see, I'm trying is, to organize it. But people, this is the kind of stuff that okay. holds people back from taking action because it can seem overwhelming. And I don't want this to be overwhelming. Put this in the hands of some experts. And when you're taking baby steps for rental investing, setting up that one simple LLC is all you need to do in the beginning. Buying that property inside the, of that LLC is all you need to do in the beginning. Maybe buying that second property inside of that same LLC is all you need to do in the beginning. Buying that third property in that same LLC is all you need to do in the beginning. Then start really having those conversations with ProVision, your attorneys, etc. Um, and the, the folks at York and Howell, H-O-W-E-L-L, -L, York and There's a and third Howell. partner now. They changed the name. It's like Hor York, Howell, and... Right, but they, those guys are fantastic for helping set it up, and I believe they're located in Utah? Yeah. Utah. So if you just do a Google search for them, you can find them. They will help you set it up. So That's that's our legal team, and we should disclaim that we don't get any uh, kickbacks there's no from referrals, them nothing if we like refer no, no. to you. We just really like those guys. They're, they're fantastic. So if you're going to go through with it, don't sweat it. Put it in the hands of people who know what they're doing. Set it up for you properly. Don't sweat the small stuff. Just take action with it. So don't get bogged down in some of those finer points yet. But I think it, what what my sister is asking, if you're going to do other business inside the LLC, um, don't put it in the same LLC that you own properties. That's, that's right. What yeah, that's a good rule of thumb. I mean, if you've got multiple businesses, if you've got a makeup line, you've got right. your home dog shampooing business. Don't couple that with real estate. It doesn't make sense. Right. Because then if you get sued for that property, they have access then to your dog shampoo business. Right. So keep things separate. If you get sued, God forbid you would, I mean, then they're only able to come after that one LLC, that one particular asset. And yeah. that's why you do it that way. I want to address uh, this question from Dwayne Johnson. How do you handle personal money that you put to make purchases in the LLC? Um, and this was something that I got stuck on too, and I, I would had to have my uh, my dad explain it to me. There's a great book called Incorporate Yourself that I read in order to understand the differences between LLCs and S corporations and how you you know start those up and how you pay people out of it. So this is how I learned this, is when you open an LLC and then you wanna purchase a property inside the LLC and you have the bank account, but you have saved money as a family, right, in your savings account, and you wanna put that money inside your LLC bank account in order to buy things, Things, uh, that's called contributed capital and contributed capital um, is not a tax write-off uh, but that's how it's handled on your tax return so you'll be able to tell your accountant I took forty thousand dollars out of our savings account and I put it in this business account and that is taxed as contributed capital is that is that a good answer that's a good answer okay. that's a good answer we've got a question here from um, she has a two-part question. Adana, you want to read both of those from Adana? Okay. Hi, I need help getting a small loan to fund a rehab, twenty to thirty thousand at a low interest, but having a problem finding a lender. They always have a fifty thousand dollar minimum. Um, in in which case, you're right. Even the more formal private lenders that specialize in real estate have a fifty thousand dollar minimum. Some of them even more than that, um, some of them $75,000 minimum. And obviously, you can see why they would do that. It's riskier to loan for smaller potatoes. But um, 
in that case, you know what, I would look into more private money options. And we're going to point you to another person that we like a lot on how to secure private money. Susan Lasseter Lyons has a great book called Getting the Money. Um, because if you need that little of money, it's going to be really tough. You can either use a home equity line of credit or a personal equity line of credit um, that's not based on your primary residence. Or, again, start thinking more creatively. So another great way to do it is to, we just partnered with a team that will do funding with 0% interest. And it doesn't, it's not tied to your personal credit. It basically is able to, enables you to set up a business line of credit. And we've done it. It's fantastic. We have it up on our um, up on our website. If you go to uh, our website, morrisinvest.com slash funding, morrisinvest.com slash funding. You can sign up for a call with them, but it'll be 0% interest. They basically set up multiple credit card lines under your business name. It's not tied again to your personal credit. And you can get up to about $250,000. We've had a lot of the investors that work with us at Morris Invest go through that same same process. Yeah, 0% interest is killer. And especially because you're only using it for a short amount of time. Uh, that's another great reason. So there are a lot of lenders out there. There are a lot of private investors out there that will do 0% or they'll, they'll do 12% for 12 months with like two points up front. That's smaller, uh, shorter term funding for a rehab project or a flip. Um, and then there's obviously private lenders who will also do five-year loans, 10-year loans, those types of things. You just need to shop around. I would also recommend going on LinkedIn. And I've got a whole video series here on the channel called our Private Money Video Series. And it walks through step by step by step in these videos how to get private money. So step one and how to set up your credibility worksheet. All of those things are in these videos. I think it's like a six-part video series. They're each like 10 minutes long. Totally free. So right here on the channel. Uh, go check that out. Um, all right, uh, Ivan, we've got a. Natalie stepped away for a second. We've got to wrap this up. Okay. Um, so Natalie's here. Just... Natalie's here, but she's uh, breastfeeding. <laughs> this is a family business. This right? is a family business. This is how you do it. Um, all right, final question. Um, well, we got two more questions. John Grubb wants to know Is your holding LLC based in New Jersey? No, it is not. Our holding LLC is in the state of Wyoming, which according to our attorneys and our tax team has, offers the highest level of legal protection. In a way, it makes your investments lawsuit proof. Here's how. You own your individual properties in an LLC. Those LLCs then report up to your holding company, which is out of that state in the state of Wyoming. Wyoming and Nevada offer the two best. We, Wyoming, I guess, is even better than Nevada. And then it, if someone wanted to sue you, because the assets actually are reporting, like the cash flow and the asset are reporting up to a, something that's in Wyoming, it makes it very difficult to be sued and for that person then to get anything out of the lawsuit. Because it's like, well, now I've got to file two lawsuits in two different states and Wyoming is almost like ironclad. Wyoming is like ironclad and I'm not able to actually get at that money so it kind of stops the way it was described to us by our attorneys and our team is that it basically stops lawsuits in their tracks I hope that was helpful but we use a corporation but, services company but we use a corporation services company in order to have an address in that state because you need to have a presence in those states you can't just file an LLC um, and so our lawyers also set that up for us Okay, so there you go. So again, Wyoming was the answer. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, okay. And do, 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 do. and we had another question. Uh, Ivan wanted to know: Is Tampa a good place to invest? Um, to me, it comes down to return on investment or ROI. And you know, there's lots of great places to invest across the country. Uh, you just need to do your homework. Um, Tampa, I'm sure, it depends on what type of investing, if it's buy and hold investing. Sure, you can find great properties in Tampa. You may pay, you may pay more for them, it might be more expensive. And again, it might cut into your return on investment. So again, I've got videos here on the channel about how to figure out ROI or return on investment. And that we invest for cash flow. That is our main reason for investing and a high return on investment, high ROI. We want a net return of about 10 to 12%, a gross return over 20. And if Tampa offers those types of returns for you, then great. 
remember the cutoff for purchasing a single family home in the value range is about $150,000. If you're spending more than $150,000 on a single family home for investing, then the rent is not going to keep up with the value of the house and therefore you're gonna probably be overpaying for that property. Um, Tom wants to know, do, 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 oh, does India or Adana wants to know, does Indiana have a yearly fee for setting up an LLC? No, California does, but no. Uh, California rips you off every which way till Tuesday. Um, uh, Clayton, <laughs> Clayton likes to, to talk about California like that because I'm from there. And be nice. I am being nice. I'm just but, saying. Yes, it it costs you $800 if you live in California. You have to re you have to pay it every year. You have to re-up it every year. So right. if, if one of your rental properties makes $800 a month, you have to really factor that into your investing. I yeah. mean, that's kind of a pain. It's expensive. So, it is expensive to do, to do business yeah. there. Uh, Tom Reed wants to know, are you looking into a series LLC? <sighs> yes. Yes, we are looking into it, but... It's not something that we've structured into our business, and our team hasn't advised us to do it that way. I mean, our series LLC, I guess, could, I mean, it's kind of how our holding company operates. Right. I, I've heard this question before, and I looked into it, and I was like, I don't understand how that's not what we already have. So, um, Because they fiddled with our structuring a little bit, but that's why you do this with a good attorney. Right. So that they make sure that it's best for you and your goals. Um, yeah. as an investor. And before we put Eve to nap, I'll, I'll give one more disclaimer that we're not accountants or lawyers. Um, again, the, the purpose of this channel is for you to learn from our journey. Right. Uh, and so we just enjoy sharing with other investors so that you you knock your head around a little, but you learn something new and you build wealth and you continue to grow as a family. And um, even when we get these like big legal fees, you know what, it, it was... Uh, I was grateful that we could pay it, and I was grateful that we had learned from it, and I'll be even more grateful if you learn from it, because we, we're just sharing our, our journey with other people. Right, we're hoping to help you prevent some of the early mistakes that we made in real estate investing, um, you know, and we were able to hit that financial freedom uh, mark, and that's been, you know, it's changed our life, so we want you to be able to do the same thing, and steering you in the same direction and not wandering all over the desert looking for a glass of water but having a clear direction on how to explode your rental portfolio and and make the same structure that we've uh, as well um, great so if you have any questions you can always reach out to us uh, on our website morrisinvest.com just go there we've got a ton of great resources the podcast the blog plus the funding that i mentioned morrisinvest.com slash funding if you're interested in that, checking that out as well. Um, any other questions you have, please, we'll jump back into the um, we'll jump back into the stream here and answer all of your questions. Um, that's what our team does, and that's what I, I will be doing the rest of the afternoon. So, phone fixers, one more question: Are all of your LLCs in Wyoming, or is the holding LLC only? Just the holding LLC. No. Yeah. Our LLCs are in the states where our properties are located: Michigan, Indiana, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, etc. So. And and um, my sister uh, Lindsay is on the is in the chat room too, and she had asked what to name your LLCs, and I'm just going to give you the advice to keep it simple, because once you really start to grow, it tends to be hard to remember who owns what LLC, which one is it owned in, and then you want to make sure your property manager pays you in the correct bank account and whatnot. So you know we just structured them like one two three four five it, it, instead of. Uh, some people put the name of the property on the LLC, which I guess is fine. Uh, but if that LLC owns multiple properties, how are you going to remember that? Um, ProVision does something really great called a structured diagram. And we can maybe uh, white out some property addresses and share that on another podcast so that you can understand how this looks. Um, because it makes a lot of sense to me graphically. Uh oh. Um, uh oh, spit up. So, uh, yeah, just. Keep it simple. Uh, one other question here, and I love this. This is a good one to end on, I think. Um, uh, I don't know how to say your, your screen name there, but you ask, you're asking the question, have you had to experience distancing yourself from negative relatives or even close friends? I find that I can't really discuss my goals of building wealth with some of my close friends. You know, I have to say... I just finished reading a book by Joel Osteen called You Can and You Will, and he addresses that very question in one of his chapters, I think like chapter two or three, 
Uh, he, he describes there are four types of people in your life. There are those that will give you a little spring in your step. There are those that will give you a lot of thrust. Think of it like an airplane. There are those who will just inspire you and push you to greatness. There are those who are like weights, like you know, heavy weights around your ankle. And there are those that will drag you. So on an airplane, right, you're kind of flying along, you've got thrust, you've got friends who will help you and inspire you, you've got people who will kind of give you a nice little spring in your step, then you've got those people that will weight you down, and then you have those people that will drag you down. It's hard if you're married to those people, it's hard if you're like really close to those people, but you need to sort of every day remind those people of your journey. Um, he tells a story of going to a hairstylist that, or he, he would get his hair cut by this woman. And every time he went in there, she was just so negative. Her whole life, she's always complaining about everything. She always had a problem. And he was trying to drive customers her way. He would give her extra tips. He would do, it never mattered. She was always just negative. Finally, he said, you know, I can't help you. You've got to help yourself. And he distanced himself from those people. Um, there are going to be people who are going to drag you down. You, if you're hanging out in internet forums, those are the worst people. Those people that hang around in internet forums are only looking for negative naysayers who affirm their negative naysaying. And they like to feel bad. They like to feel good about themselves for not taking action. That's why I never spend any time in internet forums. You know, I watch videos like this from people who inspire me and I take action. I just came back from a conference in Nashville all with like high level real estate investors, millionaire real estate investors. Did any of them spend time in internet forums? No. They're around people, you know, you're, you're the product of the people you spend the most time with. So if you're around those close people who have negative opinions of what you're doing, don't share it with them. Just be true to your journey and take action. And pretty soon when they start seeing that you, Christina, or whomever are just are watch, sitting back and cash flow is coming in every month from your rental properties and you're able to take vacations, you're able to quit that nine to five job, not have that two hour commute every day, they're going to start to change. They're going to start to notice and they're going to want to know, what. well, what are you doing? What? That's amazing. I, I guess I just never thought of it like that. And, like, and also think about, this is something I just recently finished Gary Zukoff's book. Um, what was the name of that book? Do you remember? Um, but it, he talks a lot about uh, Seed oh, of the Soul. Seed of the Soul. And right. he talks a lot about rooting out the intentions of why you do something and why other people do something. And, you know, you really start to hear the intention behind conversation when you're talking about something that's important to you. So if you're saying, I think I'm going to buy real estate and someone was like, super risky, that's going to, you're going to lose all your money. Well, their intention is maybe not to bring you down, but they're sharing their fear because they're afraid of that and they want to say so. Because what, just like Morrissey said, we hate it when our friends become successful, right? So that is, uh, that's intention that doesn't serve you. So either learn to tune it out or learn to only share it with people who you think really have good intentions towards you. And be careful with your own intention too, because if your intention is maybe to brag or your intention is to um, inspire, that's what you're going to put out there. You know, that's what's coming back to you. Because his point is that your intention is like what you're pointing out into the world. And that comes back to you. So if your intention is bad, that comes on you. Right. And so every day, you know, you when you wake up and you have your affirmations, you write on your vision board. You have that vision board in front of your desk with what, you know, 10 properties, like pictures of 10 different rental properties. That's what I did when I started, right? I had a picture yeah. of the house that I wanted. I had a picture of the car that I wanted. I had a picture of the, the rental properties that I wanted. And when we got those first 10 rental properties, I showed my wife. I said, look at this. This was my vision board uh, two years ago, and we hit this. We, we achieved it. Seeing that every morning as part of your affirmations that you're journaling and writing down every day, it doesn't matter what your friends say. It, you know, you're going to find better friends once you start going to real estate meetings, once you start surrounding yourself with other successful people. Those, those dead weights, those draggers in your life are going to start to fall off. And I just don't have time for those people. I just, right. you know, I don't, I don't surround myself with those people at all. Uh, but I believe in the divine matrix, and I think that, you know, you should at least sort of hope for better for those people because that those people represent what inside you is fearful, and uh, you can get past that. And then hopefully those people learn, you know, by what's the saying? Rising tide floats all boats. Right. So if you do well, you're, you know. 
You're inspiring people and even the negative people. Uh, the Joel Osteen book I was uh, mentioning is called You Can, You Will. It's a great book. Um, I would download it, buy it, read it, listen to it on Audible, on your drive. It'll inspire you. It's really, really good. Um, uh, anyway, we're wrapping it up, and some people are asking uh, about uh, setting up LLCs again. Hadrian had a question about it, Tech Raving Mad, um, and others. So uh, You can either start the stream uh, from the we, beginning or write us off the chain. We, re we yeah. covered all of those things at the beginning of this video, so just once, once we're done here, just go back and watch the replay, and... Um, you'll be able to, we addressed all of those questions about the LLC. So if you're late to the live broadcast, we covered all of that and a ton of other questions. So, but it's Eve's nap time. So yeah. All right. Baby time is we got to go put her down. We got to have some lunch. Thanks everyone. And continue to ask all your questions. Um, we will answer these in the live stream here in the chat thread uh, as the day progresses, but thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you next time when we do another live broadcast. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, Good luck. Go out there, take action bye -bye. and become a real estate investor. Everyone. We'll see you. Sleepyhead.